Hey everybody and good Tuesday evening to you. It is uh, 21 News Chief Meteorologist Eric Wilhelm here. It's weather for weather geeks. What a day out there today. I complained a little bit on social media this afternoon. You know, this weather office doesn't even have a window. And if we had a window, it'd be nice if it could open because it was just that nice outside today. Our warmest day in about three months. We officially hit 64 at the Youngstown Warren Regional Airport today, marking the warmest temperature since November the 3rd. So it's been a little over three months since we've had a reading that balmy. This is a full 40 degrees warmer than our high temperature was on Sunday. What a turnaround over the last couple of days. And well, two days from now, it'll be a day a little more like Sunday rather than today. So it's a, a time of the year in which wild swings can occur. And this week is certainly no exception. We at 70 down in Wheeling this afternoon, 67 in Pittsburgh, 66 in New Philly, up in Cleveland, 63. And we matched that 63 over in Akron this afternoon. All right, on the uh, national weather map this evening, I plotted up the isobars, the lines of equal pressure, all the white lines on the map here. When you see a lot of these, usually that means we have strong weather features on the weather map. And oftentimes when you see a lot of these packed closely together, that means there's a lot of, <coughs> pardon me, there's a lot of wind in the atmosphere. This is a doozy of a low pressure system across Missouri this evening, a severe weather threat on the southern flank of this down across the uh, deep south and a warm front extends well off to the north like this we're in the warm sector that is for sure we're going to stay very balmy tonight and into the day tomorrow but the first thing we'll get is actually a period of rain which will head our way overnight for tonight and then tomorrow you know the forecast becomes a little more interesting today's day two severe weather outlook from the storm prediction center with the overnight outlook they upgraded uh, the farthest east counties in Ohio and into western Pennsylvania up to a level 2 slight risk of severe weather. They pretty much maintain that with a midday update for today. Now, if I were drawing this, I would not have the slight risk as far west as they do. I think, you know, the higher risk of severe weather is probably east of I-79 over into central and west central PA and certainly down towards Washington, D.C. I'm just uh, skeptical that uh, with the lack of instability that we'll see anything that approaches severe limits in far eastern Ohio and far western Pennsylvania. Don't want to rule out that chance, but I think the chances are pretty low and probably do not, uh, you know, uh, they're probably not a good, there's probably not a good enough chance to justify the upgrade in our risk category in terms of severe weather for Wednesday. Now, before we get to Wednesday, we are in for a rainy night tonight. There could be a shower around as early as midnight, but the steadiest rain will occur overnight, 2, 3, 4, 5 in the morning. A lot of us will sleep through this, although it may be pretty windy at times as this rain pushes through. There might be a rumble of thunder as well. Now, as many head out the door on Wednesday morning, 7, 8 o'clock around school time, the steadiest of the rain should be long gone. There might be a shower or two around, but the steady rain that we'll have overnight should be gone as many head out the door. Now the limiting factor tomorrow afternoon with regards to our severe weather, <coughs> pardon me, possibilities will be the lack of instability. That's the limiting factor. The instability is going to be pretty meager. Now the sun's going to try to come out, but the dew points are just not that high. It's early March. We're not into, you know, late spring into summer. The dew points aren't going to be 70 degrees tomorrow. Um, and so while we have a ton of wind shear above our heads, the lack of instability, I think, is going to be a real limiting factor. But because of how much shear is above our heads, it's still a non-zero risk, certainly, that any storm that does manage to get up on its feet could pack a punch. I think our window, if we're going to see any severe weather Wednesday, would be mostly between 3 and 5. The number one risk, of course, would be a damaging wind gust. With the kind of wind shear we have overhead, the tornado risk is probably not zero, although I think it's pretty darn low. Um, I think while hailstones, something that also can't be ruled out, I think the risk overall is on the lower end, perhaps a little higher once you get into interior Pennsylvania, east of I-79. So bottom line, I know I'm, I sound like I'm poo-pooing this a little bit, um, but I do somewhat disagree with, you know, having us in a slight risk this far to the west tomorrow afternoon. I just, you know, I, I think the lack of instability is, is really going to be the Achilles heel of this system. That being said, the sun is going to try to come out as we head towards midday. The, the breeze will pick up. And here's one run of, of one computer model. We call this sometimes our in-house computer model. And it's very unimpressive with what it depicts mid to late afternoon. Yes, it has a scattering of showers, but that's about it. It really doesn't have anything portrayed that 
you know, looks very severe. There will be a gusty breeze. Certainly you want to secure those la loose outdoor items. Storms or not, it's going to be pretty blustery, especially during the second half of the day tomorrow. Now, as we roll this forward, we get into a little bit of a, a break, I think, for Wednesday evening before the moisture tries to return. And by that point, the cold air will be trying to return. And I think there will be some snowflakes in the air Wednesday night into at least the first half of the day Thursday. The best chance for flurries probably winds down by early afternoon on Thursday. The sky will then clear some Thursday night. A pretty quiet start to Friday. This next warm front might try to spread a period of light snow or flurries our way late in the day Friday. Might be a few raindrops mixed in at the onset. You know, I can't rule out maybe some small accumulations of snow, perhaps late Friday and into Friday night. It's a low confidence thing at this point, but some of the modeling would suggest, you know, a little band of snow may set up around the area and give us some small accumulations. Again, that'd be late Friday and especially into Friday night. All right, shifting gears real quickly. Why am I talking about May 31st, 1985? Well, I'm starting to put together uh, a presentation I'm giving at Ohio State uh, coming up in a couple of weeks. I'm going back to my alma mater to speak at their annual uh, uh, weather symposium. Now, 100 years ago when I was at Ohio State, I was... Uh, part of the meteorology club and, and part of uh, the, the group that organized this uh, one day weather conference every year during my last couple of years at Ohio State and uh, they were gracious enough to invite me to uh, to uh, join a nice list of speakers this year and, and my, my topic is going to be the upcoming anniversary of the May 31st 1985 tornado outbreak. We're going to be talking about uh, that outbreak a lot here on Weather for Weather Geeks and on our newscasts and on our online platforms over the next couple of months. Here's the uh, lineup of speakers at this weather symposium. Now, if you're a weather geek, if you watched this deep into Weather for Weather Geeks on Tuesday evening, perhaps you'd be interested in attending. Maybe, you know, this is something that you could possibly do. It's, a, it's free to attend. Um, it's a great event. It's at uh, the Ohio Union on the campus of Ohio State on Friday, March the 21st. It starts at 9 a.m. It goes all day until 5 p.m. I speak in the afternoon on Friday the 21st. I'll be joining a, a list of lumina luminaries here, including the Weather Channel's Mike Bettis, uh, an Ohio State graduate himself, um, and, and a, a range of topics will be discussed. Uh, all things, uh, you know, weather and climate and, and water, and I think I'm the only one who's going to be speaking about true severe weather. Um, and uh, so that'll be really interesting, and of course, you know, this talk that I'm going to be giving in a couple weeks at Ohio State dealing with May 31st, that's a topic we're going to be revisiting a lot on this video. I'm going to be giving some talks here locally over the next couple of months, and as I mentioned, we're going to be uh, kind of diving into the 40-year anniversary of that historic severe weather outbreak back in 1985 quite a bit over the next couple of months. So again, I'll be talking uh, a lot about that, and I'll keep reminding you on this video I'll keep up doing some reminders, I should say, of uh, that uh, symposium at Ohio State coming up in about two and a half weeks on the 21st. Really looking forward to that. And I'll see you back here on Wednesday. We'll uh, recap whatever happened Wednesday afternoon on Weather for Weather Geeks. Hope to see you then. Have a great Tuesday night.